friends, this is Svetlana. Welcome to another video from Altenia. First, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm recovering from cold and my voice is not back to normal yet. Today, I will be working with the recently released Bloom and Bud stamp set. This set has four layering stamps for each the Bloom and the Bud, as well as three layers for several leaves. There is a very convenient layering guide on the back of the trifold insert that comes with the set. Inside of which you can also find several examples of how this set can be used. I'm starting by stamping a floral design onto a solar white panel. I'm using my mini Misty for stamping and using a stamp positioning tool is important for one trick that I'm about to show. For the bloom and the bud, I will be using the frosty pink, cotton candy, coral berry, and ruby red dye inks from Altenew. So I have the bottom layer of the bloom mounted, and I am stamping it with the lightest ink from my selection. After that, I am rotating my panel 180 degrees and uh, stamping again the same stamp using the same ink. Next, I am moving to the next layer. I've aligned the second uh, from the bottom stamp along the already stamped uh, bottom one and now I'm stamping it using the darker ink. Then I'm rotating the panel again and uh, stamping this layer on top of uh, another flower. I will be repeating this process for all other layers and elements of my floral design. Uh, this is actually the trick that I mentioned before. Uh, you only need to align each element once. And then, with this rotating the pedal trick, stamp two elements for the price of one alignment. Ok, here I came to the point where the element I'm about to stamp will overlap already stamp one. Which means it's time for masking. I will be using a new product from Altenew, Mask Stencil. Which is basically a set of positive and negative masks for each element of the corresponding stamp set, made out of a thin plastic. Of course, you can cut out your own mask out of a masking paper. But if cutting masks is not your thing, this product can come very handy. To secure the mask, I'm using a bit of temporary tape adhesive. I'm applying the mask with a slight shift, creating kind of a buffer for stamping. As the stamp that is used to stamp uh, over this mask won't reach the area right next to it. The same happens with paper masks too. We should leave some space between the mask and uh, the edge of the element underneath to get the stamp impression right next to this edge. Now I will be stamping a green element uh, of my design and I'm using grass field, shadow creek and mountain pine inks for that. Now one important thing to remember on this step. Each time you stamp an overlapping element, you have to remember to place a mask before stamping. My advice here is to take your time and don't rush, as you can get carried away and forget to place a mask before stamping. Ask me how I know. You may notice that before applying ink I am rubbing a stamp with an eraser. It's the first time I am working with this set. And the very first time I stamp with a new stamp I usually condition it by rubbing with an eraser. It helps ink to be applied onto a stamp evenly. Ok, so uh, I'm now stamping buds uh, in the both top and the bottom parts uh, of the panel. And then I will stamp uh, several leaves around the blooms. Sometimes in areas where a bloom has uh, a bit deeper look in design, I'm getting a gap uh, in stamping. It's easy to fix by shifting a, a mask a bit more from the bloom edge. Or sometimes just uh, pressing harder the misty lid can help too. The Misty has a foam pad which uh, has some uh, give to it and allows to kind of press a, a stamp uh, into a cardstock. Uh, one more thing I want to note. Uh, this is the first time I'm working with this product and uh, I'm in a learning process still. You saw me before placing a mask, then placing a stamp onto it and uh, every single time I picked up uh, a stamp with the Misty lid, it dragged the mask with it. Clear stamps uh, tend to stick to everything, uh, they even drag paper, not speaking of a slick plastic mask. 
Then I figured out that I can additionally secure the mask with a misty magnet. Or you can first place a stamp, mount it, and then place a mask onto a stamped element. As soon as you don't forget to place a mask. It's a real and ever-present danger for card makers to forget to place a mask before stamping. I have trimmed the panel to 3 and 3 quarter and 5 inches. I usually use this size uh, of a panel with an A2 card base. And I also stamped one more leaf for each cluster. When I finished stamping, I decided to take a risky step and blend mocha ink onto the panel. I say risky as uh, on this point I already invested quite a bit uh, into this card and uh, didn't know exactly if it would look better with added ink blending versus just clear white background. So here you see me applying masks onto the elements of one cluster. For ink blending I'm using an ink blending brush. You can use any other blending tool that works for you. I opted to use the brush, this time as it allows to access small areas and gives softer result. I found that brush doesn't pull up the mask as an ink blending tool could do. In the spots in between masked elements, I also holding them with my fingers while blending ink with the brush. Uh, first, I was securing masks using a bit of temporary tape adhesive. Uh, but then I found that it was more convenient to tape down smaller elements uh, to the uh, bigger mask. This way I can move them together from one stamped cluster to another. Somewhere here I got carried away and didn't see that my camera stopped recording. Luckily I didn't miss a lot of important uh, footage. I was simply in blending uh, moving the masks from one element to another until I covered the whole white space of the panel with ink. After I finished ink blending, I started adding the pure white ink spray splatters onto the panel. I have one floral cluster masked and I'm covering another part of the panel with a piece of acetate. First I added splatters onto the area with masked cluster. Then I moved masks onto the another one and uh, did splattering there. In turn covering the first area with the acetate. To finish off the card, first I four mounted the panel onto a white A2 card base. I cut word hacks out of a white and brown cardstock using a die from the script words die set. Then I stacked them with a slide of set and adhered onto the card. Lastly, I added several white crystals. Uh, when I add small embellishments uh, onto my card, uh, first I find the position for them. This step can take a while. I usually start with uh, areas that uh, need uh, to be hidden under an embellishment. Uh, like small flaws and non-perfections, you know what I mean, of course. And then I add several more embellishments following a triangle pattern. After I'm happy with their position, I shift each one a bit, add an adhesive, pick an embellishment up with my jewel picker and place onto the adhesive. Uh, finally, I'm pressing them with an acrylic plug. So that uh, would be it for today, the video turned out to be on the longer side, uh, I hope you learned something new from it. Have a wonderful day, bye.